and the Hemis guy is killed. So that <sighs> it was not to intimidate anybody, it was to piss everybody off. If then if I me I make a mistake, we need it. Thank you, with that guy. That guy will hit me. I will come in front. <sighs> <laughs> No wonder. I mean, guys, when Brian was having that conversation with um, some of his level two housemates, I, I was amazed. I was amazed because um, I had thought about it, but I'd not really thought about it to that extent that, oh, here me will be that one guy that wants to assert some sort of uh, mental control over the level two housemates so that they will continuously, you know, be intimidated by him and his fellow level one housemates, guys. I never really did see it that way. I just felt like he was just being overly dramatic, especially with the way he behaved or portrayed himself, his reaction after winning the second head of house challenge on Monday. I was really impressed. And aside that, I started putting two and two together, especially with regards to a particular incident that happened yesterday um, when the level one housemates were going over the brief of their task. So we're going to look into it. We're going to analyze it. We're going to share and discuss all of that on this particular episode of Frankly Speaking with Gloria Elijah. So please make sure you watch to the end of this video so that you do not miss out on any part. Yes, but before I proceed into the conversation, you welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Glory Elijah. This is Frankly Speaking with Glory, and I am the girl with the tea. And the tea of this video is all about analyzing happiness as a head of house and as a fellow housemate to the rest of the level of housemates. Now, let me put this disclaimer out there. This is not me picking on Hermes. This is not me hating on Hermes. This video is basically to analyze hear me's reaction yes so far since on monday he's been doing some things that's worthy of talking about yeah not because it's negative right so this video is all about that we're just going to talk about it and also get into brian's theory of why hear me does the things he does in the arena whenever the two levels have to come head on um, for a task. If this is your first time coming across my video, coming across my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. But please do not leave without subscribing to this channel. It's quite easy. Just do exactly what you see on your screen. Um, if you are looking for that space where you can get the most detailed, factual, accurate analysis of reality TV shows, movies, and trending social topics, this is the right space for you to be. Now, all of that said, guys, we can now quickly jump into the conversation. We all saw how Hair miscarried himself during the Head of House Challenge. Dude was breathing so hard. I remember the way I described him. I said that this guy was breathing as if he wanted to transform into a Voltron or even Shango, the Yoruba god of, um, is it god of thunder or god of iron? Guys, please correct me in the comment section. I'm not sure. But he was, he was breathing so hard. Like, <laughs> but guys, it was kind of weird at first. And somehow it was funny because I just felt like maybe he was just putting up faces, you know, and all whatnot. But then he had started off that act you know after they had finished playing the first round of the head of house challenge and um, when big brother was doing his fact checking fact finding whatever just to you know pick out the housemates that qualified onto the next round guys he had actually increased the tempo of his breathing and it was kind of scary at some point because i felt like okay is that this guy has issues with breathing z asthmatic guys i wasn't really sure what was going on with him but i found it quite funny and entertaining then he had qualified onto the next round you know and had emerged the winner of the head of house title for the week now that was when he now increased all of that dramatics that he was doing guys you know he was uh, he was uh, he was uh, he was uh. <laughs> guys it was a lot <laughs> it was a lot and a lot of people started asking questions online especially that okay why was Hermes doing all of that? What was that all about? What was all the dramatic? What was all the, you know, Shango? What was all of that about? People were asking questions, but in the midst of all of those questions, people were just basically happy for him. Um, people were just basically excited. People, we all saw it as, you know, a good show for TV. I mean, I personally, I did not think he was faking it. 
because as I had mentioned on my channel before, I had done my own background check on Hermes and I had discovered that he is into contemporary dance. Yeah, contemporary African dance or contemporary European dance, guys. I think it's all a mix. The guy is really good at what he does. So I just felt like, okay, maybe it's just the artist in him, the performer in him, you know, coming to play, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So I just felt like it was just being Hermes, but I did not think of it in any other way. Then yesterday, Hermes displayed a similar act again, but this time around, he was having a meeting with his fellow level one housemates. You're a strong individual, we have our opinions and we have our games, whatever we're going to do with our lives throughout the day. But when we come together like this, so that chaos will not be the order of the day, then give me this badge. Say, okay, when it comes down to it, how do we organize ourselves? I will try. But I cannot do it if I'm not allowed to. We're having a meeting um, discussing and deliberating on um, the new weekly wager task that Big Brother had briefed them um, with. So um, they were all coming up with ideas and you know how they normally do. Everybody will be bickering, talking at the top of their voices, talking at the same time. When people want to talk, they keep on interjecting, not wanting people to fully express themselves. And that had really infuriated Hermes. And he had actually called their attention and had been addressing them, complaining about what they were doing, um, especially referencing Chomzi because Chomzi was also talking at the time he wanted to talk. So he was pretty much upset and he was telling them that, oh, listen, I cannot be the head of house if you do not give me the permission to be the head of house. If you do not give me the permission to head this house, then I cannot do it. And whilst he was talking, some of them, they were still making side comments. Chomzi especially was still talking back, you know, not allowing him to finish his sentences. And it was really getting on his nerves. And at some point he got really upset and then he stepped down off his head of house throne and then he told his fellow housemates that listen this is it he's not going to be on that throne again they should just go ahead and rehearse whatever they want to rehearse but he's not going to impute anything he's not going to say anything he's just going to step back and allow them to do whatever they want to do you know since they do not want him to handle his reins of leadership in peace the moment he stepped down his head of house throne two things came to mind or three actually. Number one, I was upset with his fellow housemates for not allowing him to do his work, you know, to take on his responsibility as the head of house properly, to lead them properly. That's number one. Number two, I was thinking like, okay, isn't this a bit much? Isn't this unnecessary? Like you guys um, are determined to win this week's wager and there's no time. There's no time at all. You people are still at the planning stage of your task you're not even sure of what you want to do yet so why are you getting upset why are you leaving your head of house throne why are you stepping down from your responsibilities why what is it going to change how is it going to affect the dynamics of you know the relationship of everybody in the house why are you doing what you're doing that's number two thing i was thinking about then the third thing i was thinking about was okay this is pride i'm actually looking at because from all what hermes was saying I've actually been watching the way he's been carrying on conversations with his fellow housemates with regards to the task. And um, I just perceived that, okay, this guy, I know he's really good though. I know that he's really good. And I know that he's a very, very creative and innovative individual. Very, very talented, extremely talented. But in those moments, I started perceiving pride. I started perceiving someone who felt like He's the most talented person in the house. Not even just amongst his level one housemate, but in this entire season of Big Brother. Yeah, I just perceived that about him. And formerly, I used to feel, well, it's okay. Everybody can see themselves as the best of the best of them all. But this time around, he just couldn't help himself because I just felt like it was just, you know, the thing just did flow come out, you know? So when he stepped off his head of house throne, I did not take it lightly. Some people agreed with me, whilst some people did not agree with me. For those who did not agree with me, they felt like, no, it was actually necessary for Hermes to take the entire day off, you know, to step down his position of head of house, you know, so as to teach his fellow housemates a lesson so that they will know how valuable he is, you know, how much his contributions to their task really matters. And I'm like, oh, is that so? Is that so? Is that a good quality? of a leader because as far as i'm concerned guys i just felt like that was just unnecessary to be very honest i mean on a normal day 
maybe in our day-to-day -day lives, right, you're trying to assert your opinion and people are not really accepting you, especially because you are the leader or what, right? Or perhaps they see you as a competition. I mean, it's okay for you to take a step back and just chew and allow them mess up and then they will now say, oh, I die, no, we would have listened to this person. But then, guys, <laughs> The odds are not in the favor of the housemate at the moment because the, sh the, the time they have to prepare for their wager, it's really short. And what Big Brother is asking of them is very, very technical. It's about sports. They're supposed to come up with an entertaining presentation of sports, a unique sport that does not exist. So they have to create their own sports. Aside that, they have to also create instruments for that sport. It's just like for football, there's actually a ball. For basketball, there's the basketball court, there's the net, there's the ball itself. So for their own sport, they have to be extremely creative, come up with something out of this world that has not been created before. And aside from being just a sport, it has to be entertaining, guys. So that's like Big Brother asking the world of them. So in my opinion, at that point in time, I felt like, no, hear me, a lot of things are at stake. I understand your fellow housemates, they are being buttheads, but you cannot allow yourself to be swallowed up by their own stupidity yeah i'm sorry but i have to say it you cannot allow yourself to be swallowed up by their own stupidity i mean i felt like at that point in time we were supposed to take the reins of authority seriously and let them know that listen big brother gave me this authority if you do not want it if you have a problem with it then go take it up with big brother and then he should have stamped his own authority and gone ahead you know to proceed with the rehearsals with the suggestions that he was giving you know, because the moment he stepped off, there was a moment of confusion. It felt as though the rest of the housemates were kind of lost. And I felt it at that moment that, okay, these people, they probably have been putting all their hopes on Hermes to some extent. That was why they were feeling the way they felt the moment Hermes stepped down that head of house throne. Let's connect the dots from the head of house challenge to um, the incident of yesterday and what Brian was explaining this morning to his fellow housemates. Beauty came in, I was like, that guy is a demigod. Like, what? I hate when people okay, make I people happy. Bro, that's what she said. So, subconsciously, he's, see, he's a team. And then he, he's. According to Brian, whilst they were observing the seven days lockdown before the show started, um, he had noticed that most of the guys were reading the 48 Laws of Power. I don't know if he meant that literally or maybe he was just being sarcastic, but he said that we're studying the 48 Laws of Power, that he does not like the book because the book teaches you how to be an asshole. Guys, I have seen the book, I've read a part of it, and it could be right to some extent. Some people say that the book is really great, and some people say that, oh, the book is so... It teaches you how to just be very, very mean, wicked, you know, that kind of thing. So Brian was just basically saying that Kiemis had actually studied that book because most of the things that he has been doing from time to time, whenever they have a task, it feels like it stems from some of the knowledge that he has garnered from that book. That was when he used the opportunity to encourage his fellow housemates, I mean, those that were in the room at that time, that listen, that what this guy is doing, it's just a ploy that all of those breathing exercise, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I had to call it that. Yeah, that all of those breathing exercise, all of those, <sighs> you know, all those venting stuff that he was doing, that they are all just acts to put fear in their body. And that that was exactly what happened to Saif. That Saif kind of got distracted and got carried away or probably just got scared, you know, wondering, like, okay, what is this guy up to? And that was why he lost focus on playing that second part of the head of house challenge properly because initially Saif had even started well Hermes was just messing up but then Hermes had actually looked over at Saif and had seen that oh Saif was actually using a better technique and he had you know copied Saif's technique and that was how he was way faster and he was doing that and he was just doing a lot in the arena so Brian had gone ahead to encourage and even advise his fellow housemates that listen next time when they have a task they should completely focus their own energy on the task at hand and completely ignore the other housemates, especially Hermes. Now, the guy is playing psychological games with them. The moment Brian was done explaining, guys, I had no choice but to give him a round of applause. I said, come on, this guy is good. For his age, 22, he's really smart. Extremely smart and very, very observant. Because honestly, the way he explained all of that about Hermes, guys, it just clicked because I knew that, okay, something was not really adding up. What are my thoughts about Brian's revelations, his explanations, guys? I think it's really spot on. Now, for Hermes, 
I think it's a great thing, if at all it's part of Hiemi's strategy to stay in the game and to stay ahead of the game or possibly emerge the winner, I think it's a great strategy. Yes, I mean, guys, there's nothing as good as you playing mind games on your opponent. You will get them right where you want to get them. You will confuse them. You will scatter them. You will make them clueless. You will make them tremble in your presence. And if that is exactly what Hermes is gunning at, believe me, guys, when I say that, he's actually doing a, an amazing job, a fantastic job. Because at the end of the day, Big Brother Ninja Season 7, it is a show, not just for entertainment, but for the housemates, it's a competition. They have to hustle to win. They have to come up with whatever game that they can to stay in the game, possibly stay to the finals and emerge the winner if the odds be in their favor. So I think Hermes is doing a fantastic job so far, you know, being a transformer, being a Shongo lookalike and actor like whatever he wants to do, he should just bring it on as long as it does not go against Biggie's rules, right? And now for Brian, I think Brian is also on the right path. There's nothing as good as you being very, very observant, having your, your observing antennas, you know, on and very, very alert to understand the strategies of your fellow housemates so that you too can stay ahead of their game. You too can stay ahead of their own strategy. And I think that's exactly what Brian is doing at the moment. So ladies and gentlemen, as far as I'm concerned, my eyes are on these two gentlemen because I feel like both of them, they've got their own game figured out. They possibly might not have gotten Biggie's game figured out, yes, but I think they have gotten their own games figured out. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how it's going to pan out, how it's going to last them, and if at all, it's going to sustain them. So just go ahead and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll see you all on another episode of Frankly Speaking with Gloria Elijah as there are more videos to come, guys. So do not miss out. Keep checking this channel for more updates, all right? Have an amazing day. Bye.